okay we got the red light and i'm going to intro us in in five four hey everybody eric here with biz talk the show and um i am super excited like a kid in a candy store here i actually have somebody from nasa like who thought i was gonna get to talk to somebody from nasa that whole kid dream where we're you know we're flying off into space on rocket ships we're all going to be astronauts or maybe you know they're going to build the next starship enterprise and we're going to be on it um so i'm like a kid in a candy store right now but the reality of it is is that nasa isn't just there right they don't just build rocket ships in the backyard um it takes a whole lot of um, uh, people and businesses and operations and engineers and a whole gaggle of of uh, people to uh, make NASA function um, from the concrete on the launch pad all the way up to the ideas and everything else. Um, and so I have with me today, I have the uh, small business uh, program manager, Richard Mann. Um, and he's going to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, uh, basically, um, his job is to make NASA run, to bring the people in to, you know, answer the bids and, and get contracted to, to do work that needs to be done so we could have satellites in space and people on the ground. And even some things I'm pretty sure NASA does that we don't even know about. And I don't mean the conspiracy stuff. I mean, like, you know, maybe monitoring the weather. Um, so Richard, introduce yourself and uh, talk to me a little bit. Fix me. Uh, fix my mistakes. Well, uh, yeah, I might steal it back from making NASA run. Uh, <laughs> that's a little broader. You know, I have my little niche. Um, and then, you know, there, there are actually uh, quite a few of me doing my role within NASA. Uh, I'm operating out of the NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C. Uh, at the agency level. And then our field offices around the country also have uh, people that do stuff similar to me. And then there's, um, you know, infrastructure headquarters, too, where there are a couple of people who, who are like me as well. So um, and so. Um, we what we try to do is um, advocate for small businesses, and that has to do everything with the industrial base uh, so that uh, the government has enough competition to provide what it needs. And so uh, to that end, not only do we do uh, work with small businesses, but we actually also work with uh, HBCUs and minority servicing institutions uh, because they do, you know, universities do research. And that's a big part of our procurement portfolio. So uh, we work with them as well. And then we also, of course, work with the large businesses who then sub out to uh, small businesses. And uh, in the aerospace field, that's a uh, huge component of our overall program because uh, there aren't really any small businesses that build rockets or spacecraft. Uh, their SpaceX was considered to be small until about 10 years ago. And then by virtue of, you know, their work that with us and with Air Force and their private world work, you know, they, they, you know, they outgrew, uh, the size standard for being a small business. So, uh, but in, in any event, small businesses, uh, there are thousands of them who build components of the rockets and the spacecraft and do some of the engineering and the research and development. Uh, so that, so, so we work with all, you know, all of those different units, the large businesses, the small businesses and universities. Okay, and 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 that really brings a um, question to mind when you're talking about small businesses developing components. Um, so I want to pare that down a little bit to to sort of put it in the scope for let's say you know a small forty person group. Maybe they're making you know I don't know what components, but maybe circuit boards. And it's a small company, maybe in the Midwest right. or whatever. Are right. those if they're prepared, which I think we could talk about too, preparedness. <laughs> Um, if they're prepared to bid on a contract, like, is this something that, you know, is this that space that NASA is, is, is looking in when we talk about uh, So the example that you gave, um, it's very industry specific, how we would guide small businesses. So in the example that you gave of circuit boards, um, that's most likely a thing that our prime our large primes uh, would buy rather than NASA buy directly. Okay. okay. So, um, so our role primarily in terms of advocating for small businesses, when small businesses come to us, uh, our, my primary role is to guide them through the bureaucracy and get them to the right people. Now, 
Is there going to be a phone tree? Probably. Uh, in this, in your example, it's going to be to our field offices because all the contracts are done out in the field. They don't come through headquarters where I am. So it's a little idiosyncrasy that we have. Uh, so I have to steer them to the right centers who contract with the large businesses who would buy the circuit boards. All right. right. So you're going from, um, in my case, headquarters to a field office or one or more field offices to prime contractors. Okay. So that's what it looks like. So there is some uh, persistence uh, that would be required to get to the right place. Because, I mean, after all, we are a bureaucracy. So um, so there is going to be some of you can expect that there will be at least some of that. Hopefully we can make that as painless as possible. But, uh, the, you know, there's no getting around that entirely. So, you know, I, I guess that, that brings me back to preparedness, because, I mean, we bid a NASA contract many years ago. It was an right. opportunity. <laughs> and. When we got, you know, we didn't get selected. Um, and it was really the first time we actually bid something on the federal level. We were seeing successes at the state and local level with for what we did in marketing, creative services, uh, designs of that nature, um, <clears throat> but never, you know, at the federal level. And that was, I think, our first federal contract. And, and we got smacked pretty quickly in the debrief. They were like, yeah, no, you just didn't answer the bid correctly. And I was like, what do you mean? And they were like, nope. That's it. You just didn't do it right. And uh, that set us up in the realize, realization that you must be prepared. And even so, how does, let's say, someone get to understand if would they call you or how would they get to know if they're prepared? Oh, all right. So let me go back to the subcontracting concept, because in addition to just the reality of the aerospace industry, if you're in uh, a different industry and there's still services that we buy, uh, the subcontracting route is a way to get your foot in the door and to get your feet wet. Um, now, developing, earning a subcontract is not probably not that different from real world business development where you got to build relationships with prime companies or large companies who have prime contracts. Um, and that's probably a little more difficult in the post COVID world where a lot of our outreach efforts are, you know, are going to be virtual, not all of them, but some of them are going to be virtual. And those events tend to be more unilateral uh, and it's hard to network like that. Um, but so so in, in the example that you gave of your own company, um, you know, you can try at the subcontracting level first and then you kind of learn how the proposals work. In fact, we have a our own mentor protege program uh, to that, you know, where the large funds provide technical assistance. And by technical, it could be, you know, the actual uh, work that you're doing, or, you know, it could be on the business end, of, you know, business development end. And that's separate from the government-wide mentor protege program that SBA runs. Okay. Um, now, um, when we'll do our outreach events, and we'll usually do a how to do business with NASA talk, one of us, either, you know, uh, the, the head of small business or I or one of my counterparts will. And um, when I do it, usually I hit on three themes. And one, is, the first one being just our bureaucracy, like I've discussed a little bit, which of our field offices buy your product or service, right? Uh, so we're decentralized, but we're evolving. So that's been changing over the last couple of years. And again, it's industry specific. The second theme is subcontracting. Um, you know, not only is it, um, you know, inherent in the aerospace industry, but it's also practical in terms of, uh, you know, getting your feet wet and breaking in. It's hard to break in cold turkey at the prime level without ever having NASA work before. Okay, it really is. And then the third uh, concept is that uh, it does take patience and persistence. Uh, it is not an instant gratification endeavor trying to get uh, contracts with NASA. One of the reasons for that is because a lot of our contracts are uh, multi-year contracts. So they could be five years or longer. So you, you may find a contract that you know, you can perform or part of one you can perform, but it doesn't come up again for three years. All right. Um, the other aspect to that is you got to be on the right team. You know, you're going to might have four or five, six primes offering on one contract. And you have to be fortunate enough to be on the right team to win the thing. Um, and then the, the procurement process itself, um, you know, for better or worse, uh, can take a year and a half, two years. Uh, for, for market research, you know, uh, a, a draft RFP, comments come into that and the final RFP, and then, you know, the source selection process that easily take over a year. Right. So, uh, if you're going to commit 
to um, trying to get work in NASA, you know, you probably would need to make a long haul or a long term commitment. Mm -hmm. um, so those are kind of the things that uh, I would I would uh, tell small businesses who are new to NASA. You know, it's just, you know, this is what you can expect. I mean, we don't want to discourage anyone, but we, you know, we don't want to paint an overly rosy, rosy picture either. You know? Yeah, no. So. And, and and you have to respect that. I mean, entrepreneurial, small business, it's a long haul. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a commitment at any level. And I think once, you know, it's, it's government contracting is actually pretty small, um, tap as far as small businesses are concerned, because a lot of them don't know how to navigate that landscape. But then once you're up into these bigger things, the NASA, the aerospace, that's, that's even a smaller segment, which, which, Again, it's it's work. So I I don't think you you saying you you don't want to paint a rosy picture is the picture we need. We need the you know the real picture for a lot of people. I wish I had it when uh, I said yeah. oh, we're going to do NASA. You know, and then I, I'd reference your introduction to our our chat today, where you're excited about you know uh, talking to a NASA person. Well, you know, a lot of people are, and so yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of competition usually for our contracts simply because of that aspect. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's another little challenge. <laughs> I'm all smiles. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking to a guy from yeah. NASA. I, I feel really, right. yeah, I'm going to run around with that and be like, hey, I talked to somebody from NASA. <laughs> you know, it's going to be my thing for a little while. But, um, you know, let's step that back too, because like we, we understand that there's prime contractors. You have your prime contractors. At this point, is SpaceX one of your, is a prime contractor would be considered, right? right? And then there's the Lockheed Martins. Yeah. Um, the the Boeing's. There's just these major, major. Right. In fact, um, we we publish. In fact, we just put out our most our updated list every year. We will publish a list of our top twenty prime contractors. We put it on our website. And our website, the NASA's main website is NASA.gov. And then for us, it's backslash backslash OSBP Office of Small Business Programs. Or if you Google NASA OSBP, it'll come up. And then within that website um, that you will see somewhere, and it's a it, the whole agency redid everybody's website again. So, you know, I'm still getting used to the new one. Um, the, this top 20 primes, and then it's got, uh, it'll tell you, in, in the top 20 is in terms of how much money we obligated to them uh, in the previous fiscal year, which was 2023. And uh, at the top of the list every year is actually Caltech which runs our uh, Jet Propulsion Lab in Pasadena, and they do our planetary uh, robotics missions. So they're unmanned with their planetary missions. That's mostly, mostly the Mars stuff, but some other stuff as well. Um, and so uh, they're our largest uh, contractor in terms of dollars every year, right? So um, we do route some companies to them, but we make it clear you're selling to Caltech rather than, you know, they're a sub to Caltech rather than selling to NASA directly. And then uh, the next companies are the ones you mentioned, uh, SpaceX, Lockheed, Boeing, Northrop Grumman. You're, th those are usually your top five uh, year in and year out. Um, so and so we put websites on their list, on that list, like their supplier website. Um, that's a start, but it really helps it more if you have a, a person to talk to with these companies. Um, those are hard to keep track of because a company like Boeing will have more than one and, you know, with time they'll turn over. And so then you go back to the phone tree to get to our centers. Then the centers will give you who, uh, the point of contact is at each of those companies. Usually the title for them is the small business liaison officer, yeah. SBLO. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We know a few, we know a few. Okay. So, um, so, you know, and I think that's, that's a, a really, uh, key thing is because again i i personally would be knocking on your door or your field office door asking a ton of questions and in in a lot of whys um you know i think that's a lot of the small businesses do that because they really don't know where to start um so having the resources yeah, that, that, you know, yeah. that's uh if they come to us um we're gonna we're gonna route them to right most likely my counterparts at the centers now if they're technical in nature, heavily technical, I might route them to, instead of the small business specialist, which was on the business end, what we call small business technical advisor, and they're an engineer or scientist who could speak their language a little bit better than, say, we could as, as laymen, basically. Mm. Uh, so we might do that. So, 
So, it, it, I mean, I don't think anybody's counted out in, in opportunity. It's just where they land and what they offer and if they're capable. And, and again, it seems to me like we're talking about really the best pathway. And I've had this discussion before is um, really subcontracting is an amazing pathway into getting your feet wet and working with an agency. And that's what you had mentioned here. So, um, and, and again, I know you had mentioned, uh, you know, your top 20 primes, but uh, are, are, are there more than just those top 20 that you work with that, um, you know, are, are yeah, on this list? Uh, there are. Um, again, uh, I'm sounding like a broken record here. You know, you would want to go to the centers. Uh, let's take construction, which we haven't talked about yet. Okay, great. Um, the construction companies are not going to be in our top 20 primes, okay, because most of the 15 of the 20 roughly are going to be aerospace companies, right? Uh, but we do keep construction companies, um, you might say on retainer, we have this model of multiple award construction contracts. So we have a few, a couple of our centers that manage construction contracts for that part of the country, right? For example, Stennis Space Center in Mississippi, where I used to work, uh, manages a pretty large multiple work construction contract that covers our southern locations, basically. All right. Um, now, uh, if you are a construction company in that part of the country, then I would have to route you to Stennis Space Center, my counterpart there. And then she has the, they have the list of the construction contractors that are currently have hold the contracts and hopefully points of contact there. All right. So again, it's that phone tree thing. Now, while I'm thinking of it, I'm steering, changing gears a little bit here. When I say phone tree, um, I, I'm getting most companies will contact us by email. All right. Um, I'm an advocate of calling. And the reason is because, uh, well, there are several reasons. One is the volume of email that we get is such that um, if it's a mass email, mass sent email, we're going to treat it the same as the chunk mail that we get at home. Mm -hmm. Um, if it is like individually sent to us, we will respond with another email, but it's going to be sort of a standard canned email, generally speaking. Uh, I might cater mine a little bit. Um, but it doesn't get a dialogue going. Okay. So, uh, I think conversations are better, you know, in that sense. Okay. So. Uh, and then, oh, and the, 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 the third reason is that we have a firewall and, uh, we get a, you know, quarantine thing going on. And so, uh, your email may actually literally get lost in the mail, may not even get to us. Okay. For if, if for our quarantine system doesn't like your email for what God knows what reason, we're not going to see it. Okay. So, uh, for those reasons, uh, I'm kind of old school and say, pick up the phone, you know, so. Well, I mean, so yeah. so what's like a phone call sound like if 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 someone was to call your office, yeah. what are they asking? All right. That's an excellent question. And so um, first thing, what they want to do when they introduce themselves, a lot of companies will say what socioeconomic category they are. All right. They'll say I'm an 8A or I'm a HUD zone. That's secondary to what industry they're in. OK, okay. Um, we need to know what business, what kind of work you do. All right. That will guide the discussion. OK, uh, so you need, you know, tell us what kind of work you do and that'll say, OK, can you help us, you know, meet our mission or not? All right. Um, now, what they want to know is, do we first question they ask, do we have a need for their type of work? All right. Second, if yes, then um, who is currently providing it? And what centers are buying it? OK, um, now. Depending on the nature of the contract, you may want to go to that company who is providing it, although they probably are, have already established, you know, who's going to do what kind of work in that company, whether they do it themselves or if they have team members, you know, subcontractors, whatnot. And then the third question is, when does that contract come around again for recompete? All right. So this is an information gathering research phase. All right. We publish another thing we publish on our website or something called active contract listings. All right. Those are not really don't pertain to the aerospace contracts as much as the everyday government stuff and the stuff that recurs all the time. They will tell you these, these listings will tell you, um, 
with the buying offices, where the work is done, who the incumbent is, how it was competed, whether it was set aside or not, what the value is, and when the contract expired. Okay. And that'll give you a picture of what we've got going on contract wise. And again, that's usually generally for the everyday government stuff, the construction, the facilities maintenance, the IT, the security guards, uh, things, you know, things like that. So uh, that again is on our, uh, on our website. Um, you know, those are tools, uh, you know, I think you mentioned earlier to be prepared. And uh, that's one tool that you would have to, to kind of do some research. Okay. And then once you identify those contracts, that you can do that will come up again. Uh, you want to start sniffing around about a year and a half, two years out from when they expire, uh, because that's how long it would take you that we say, you know, to get your ducks in a row to get a proposal together. Uh, it's a year and a half, two years out to get on a team to get your, you know, to get your uh, information straight and that sort of thing. So uh, that's another tool that you have. All right. So um, let me ask you a question. You guys don't have anything to do with Area 51, right? Because I'm going to have people asking me, you know, can we do subcontracting for Area 51? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we have a uh, we do have a, a facility uh, in New Mexico called White Sands. OK, um, where they do some propulsion stuff, I believe. Um, and they're under the management of Johnson Space Center in Houston. Um, to my knowledge, it is not connected with Area 51. Well, <laughs> so. I appreciate that. I, I, I you know, people got to say, why didn't you ask? Um, but, you know, you did bring up, um, you said under the management of Johnson Space Center. Right. Okay? And I think they're, you know, can you maybe clarify that a little bit? What's the difference between NASA, Johnson Space Center? Because, I mean, we, we hear they're synonymous. Right. right. So it's one Johnson is one of our what we call I, I mentioned field offices earlier. NASA has always used the term centers. All right. So uh, NASA is the agency. And uh, so it's the umbrella. And then there are depending on what you count as a center there. Mm, it's always been 10 centers. But um, in some cases, you have a place like White Sands, which is a sub installation of Johnson. Uh, there's a place in New Orleans called Michoud Assembly Facility where uh, big parts of our rockets are assembled. And uh, they're under the management of Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, because that's our main propulsion center. Um, and then, you know, you've got NASA headquarters, which is a location. And we've got a couple of buying offices that are not centers per se. Uh, one is the IT procurement office, which is kind of a cyber office, does not have a physical location. Um, and then uh, there's the NASA Shared Services Center, which uh, does most of our simplified acquisitions, which are under $250,000. They award our SBIR and our STTR contracts. Um, and uh, they, they manage some uh, agency-wide contracts that do administrative stuff for us. So, um, and they're, they're sort of, they sit in Mississippi, but they don't have their own center. They have their own building. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that's just, you know, and it's, and it's eh, kind of like uh, where the Navy has their, uh, you know, their different commands under them. Mm -hmm. And so NASA has their different centers under them. I see. So, you know. And you had just uh, mentioned SBIR, SBIR. Right. SVTT, right? STTR. STTR. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we, I hear that a lot working with uh, ASBDC, American Small Business Development Centers and, and whatnot. I hear that brought up quite a bit as programming that they have. They're teaching right. people in that. Is, um, can you just maybe explain that a little bit and, yeah. and how that? Two, yeah. So it's a, they're run by a separate office, uh, which is our um, STMD. Uh, Science Technology Mission Directorate, I believe is the uh, acronym. And um, the uh, actually the SBIR solicitation is on the street right now for this year. Uh, they're on a, a 12 or 13 month cycle. Uh, so the solicitations come out in January and then um, and then the proposals come in and the evaluations are done in springtime and the awards are now made in June time frame, uh, give or take a few weeks. Um, the um, and then the STTR is the technology transfer, and um, and that's where the 
you have to be a small business to be a prime, but you also have to partner with the university um, as part of the technology transfer process. The SBIR is the innovative research side. And, um, uh, you know, those we probably have, you know, I want to say a couple thousand awards, I think. Um, can't be exactly sure of that. So we work with that office um, a, a little bit in terms of outreach and keeping each other appraised of what's going on. But the uh, it's a separate program from our office. Okay. So if you are research and development pure like that and you're doing innovative research, yeah, we might refer you to that program. Uh, and then, you know, our, kind of our role is to advocate for small businesses. But in the SBR and SDTR program, the businesses are already small. So in that sense, you know, our role is already filled. So. All right. Uh, we're like running out of time here and there's like so much to talk about. Um and uh, I definitely think I want to try to bring you back again because there's a lot here. There's just so much mm -hmm. to unpack. Um, but uh, I wanted to just, uh, can you, again, you had mentioned the website. I'm going to have it on the screen. Um, but just okay. say it again, where do you want small businesses to, to, to go to get information? So um, typically your first point of contact are going to be our small business specialists at our centers. All right. So when you, they're on the website. Um, and there will be one or more for every one of those buying offices. So, for example, and uh, so there's it's by coincidence are two alphabetically. The first two are Armstrong uh, Flight Research Center, which is, um, you know, Edwards Air Force Base in California. And then there's Ames Research Center, uh, which is up in Silicon Valley. Both of them are California. And we have one small business specialist covering those two locations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Christine Monroe. And then you'll, but then there are a couple other centers that have three people covering one center simply because they've got, they're just bigger in terms of the number of contracts that go out and the you know, amount of money they spend. So, uh, that's your first point of contact. I mean, you can call us, but we're going to kick you to the centers. Now we might be specific and tell you which centers to call. Okay. Um, and so that's, that's your first point of contact as far as getting a dialogue going. Um, I mentioned our ACL. Yeah. We get that on the ACL website. Sheets. Yeah, that's on the website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, our, you can, I can give out the phone number for my office, which is just, it's, uh, 202-358-2088. Um, but again, that'll be your first call and we'll be, you know, directing you to the right places to go after that. Okay. So, and the reason for that is because we're kind of on a macro level and we try to steer you in the right direction. But the centers are going to have more specific information as to uh, individual contracts than we will most of the time. Okay. So, all right. And so, there, yeah, so. I mean, I, I think this is a, a great start. Again, I'm going to sort of corner you and tell you that I want to get you on again if I can, um, because I think there is a lot of information out there. And I think the biggest mistake small businesses make is, is because of the brand, NASA. They're all sort of focused, not realizing all this great information about the resource centers and the and the different um, arms and the subcontracting opportunities. So uh, I think we'll, we could try to figure out soon enough uh, when I could get you on again so we can okay. talk a little bit further. But I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you taking the time um, to talk to our audience. We're really excited to uh, have NASA. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah, it actually um, went by pretty quickly. I was like, oh, wow, we're almost out of time. So. Yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah. Well, once you start talking, it's 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 interesting. It's intriguing. It's it's and it's informational because I could tell you right now, we we we, we talk to a lot of small businesses on, on the regular, both as as government contractors and now doing what we're doing. Um, and people just are not aware. It's just a, it's just they don't understand the, the resources out there and the things that organizations like NASA puts out there to help them carve that path. So it's one of the reasons why we're really excited to have you here because it's uh, it's really, um, people need this, people need to hear it. And they, they don't need the rosy picture. <laughs> but a, a picture of some sort would help. And, you know, and that's what we're trying it's, to it's do. the operating assumption, so yeah. So I appreciate you coming on again. Thank you so much. Okay. And this is Richard Mann, the Small Business Program Manager um out over at nasa and um i'll have the phone number up on the screen and the website up and um hopefully you get inundated with positive calls 
We hope that happens. So cool. uh, yeah. thank you again so okay. much. And thank uh, you. it was a pleasure. Okay. Take care. Take care. Bye now.